Roger Montgomery from the Montgomery Fund, thanks for joining us. It's nice to be back. The, um, there's a lot of talk in the media, Roger, about uh, you know, the fact that investors should be using uh, exchange traded funds or index funds, mm. particularly to save money on management fees. Mm. Now, you're, you're uh, the other side of the fence, I guess, as an active uh, investor that looks at the market and tries to beat it. So can you explain to viewers what is an index fund or an exchange traded fund and, and just your, your view on it? Sure, an index fund uh, is, a, is a fund uh, that's designed to follow an index. It's as simple as that. An exchange traded fund, uh, some of them are index funds, some of them are enhanced index funds uh, and they're listed on the stock exchange so they're exchange traded. So you're buying a share of a, of a portfolio and that portfolio is tracking some index or some commodity or even a stock um, or a group of stocks um, that may not represent an index particularly. Um, the problem I have with it, uh, and there is a big shift on, it's been moving now since the 1970s, um, the problem I have with it is the indexes themselves upon which these funds are based are flawed. So take the ASX 200 for example, uh, it is still in 2014 below where it was seven years prior. And why is that? Because the index itself, its constituents are large companies, but not necessarily good companies. We're interested in investing in good businesses, extraordinary businesses in fact, not mediocre ones, but the index is based on mediocre ones. To give you some examples, um, Leighton's, Lend-Lease, uh, Qantas, uh, the National Australia Bank's share price today is still only slightly lower or about where it was 10 or 11 years ago. So, um, so we're not interested in businesses that aren't going to increase their value over 10 years and not going to increase their price over 10 years. Uh, Telstra is another example, its share price is where it was, uh, way below where it was uh, more than a decade ago uh, and, and that affects the index. So it's all very well buying an index because it's cheap but you want to buy businesses that are extraordinary and unfortunately the indices that are constructed aren't focused on extraordinary businesses, they're just focused on big ones. And I think the point you make is really interesting because people are focused on the fee rather than what the after fee return is. And Correct. Uh, your fund and, uh, and some others that we like has actually uh, proven that, that you've been able to do better than the index after fees. Well, so, well, if you're happy to pay for a better and safer car, you're happy to pay more for that. Well, why wouldn't you pay for a better and safer um, managed fund? It makes no sense to go for an index just because it's cheap. And finally, Roger, what would uh, uh, what should investors be looking for when selecting a managed fund? This is a, it's an excellent question that you ask, and it's excellent because it, nobody really has a an agreed answer to it. Um, but I do believe um, you need to there needs to be a match between the investor and the philosophy uh, of the fund manager. Um, you, that way, if you really need to buy into the philosophy of the manager and understand that inevitably it will have periods where it doesn't outperform or it doesn't beat other managers. But in order for it to work, you need to stick with it for a long time. In order to stay with it for a long time, you need to understand the philosophy and know when it's going to work and when it, no, it isn't going to work so you're prepared for it. Uh, it's easy for me to say that about my own investment style because I understand when it's going to work and when it's not going to work. But I want all of our investors to understand it as well uh, or we're both better off if they invest elsewhere. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Look, thanks, thanks for your insights, Roger. It's for more insights uh, from Roger and others, uh, stay tuned to our website.